Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Janie. If you are new, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And follow your girl on all social media. So, happy Vlogmas! You guys are seeing this on December 1st. I am so, 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 so excited and nervous to be filming Vlogmas this year because I have a new job. Not sure if my new schedule plus Vlogmas is gonna work out, but your girl is gonna try. We are trying to hit 25 videos in the month of December every single day. So, right now my voice is hoarse, but I was like, bruh, you're not messing up Vlogmas. Like, there's no way whatsoever that you're gonna mess up Vlogmas. So, I'm so sorry for the scratchy coarseness of my voice. But I promise you, this is not how I sound normally. Not like there's anything necessarily wrong with someone who has like this tone of voice. It's just not my tone of voice. Like, I'm looking at myself in the camera and I'm like, oh my god, that voice is coming out of your mouth. Wow. Crazy. But today we're going to be doing like an updated version of a get to know me. Like, I did my first, first ever YouTube video was a get to know me. And that was, I want to say like a year and a half ago. So... Some things have changed, some things are still the same. If you guys do want to watch that old video, I'm going to link it at the top. But otherwise, let's get into it. And while we're doing it, I'm going to do my makeup. I'm not like a makeup person. It's late at night and I'm not going nowhere. But it was an excuse to drink. So today, we are going to be drinking Saint Somewhere Chardonnay 2019. I've never tried this. I got it all the Trader Joe's, which is where I get most of my wines from. I'm also... During Vlogmas, I'm going to be giving you guys like a list of like the top five best like holiday type wines. Like if you're a white winer, God bless your heart. I am not. I'm just trying to Chardonnay just because. But my red winers, like I'm going to be having like probably like four red wines and one white wine. But we'll see what happens. Let's go. Alright, so I pulled back my hair. The first thing we are going to go in with is the... Fenty Beauty Primer. I think this one is the mattifying one. I'm gonna try to remember to link all of the products that I use down in the description bar. But yes, let me start with all of the questions. I have my phone on this side. And then, you know what? I should bring my mirror onto this side as well. That way I don't have to like keep looking two different directions. So one of my first questions asked me, which I was expecting this, what is your real name? So clearly by the um, title of my channel, I call myself Janie. Well, I don't call myself Janie. Janie is my nickname, like my friends and stuff call me that. So the next question is, how old are you and what is your birthday? So I am 26, my birthday is 9-9, aka September 9th, aka Virgo. Next I'm going to go in with the Pro Filter Hydrating Longwear Foundation and I am the number 370. Well that was my summer color, let's see how winter's looking because I don't really do my makeup often so I'm not one of those that has like a winter color and a summer color, which I should because I've definitely had times so where I've been walking around looking very tanned and orange when that's not what needed to be done. But um, for my chin, I always go in my concealer first because I have like dark marks under my chin. So I'm going to look kind of crazy here first. But yeah, I have like a lot of dark spots under my chin. And any little tiny spots I see around my face, I just always correct them first using my concealer because they're not like terrible spots like they're honestly I just like doing the most I, I like doing the most so yeah the next question well not really question statement said uh, talk about your childhood so I am originally from Antiguan Barbuda a island in the Caribbean my childhood was pretty typical islandery like we went to the beach a lot because you know <laughs> That's kind of what you do. Um, I grew up mostly with my dad because my mom lives in the States. Well, she lives here, but at the time, clearly, I was in Antico. So I grew up with my dad. Um, I have, mm, I want to say, I have three brothers. 
I only acknowledge two because I didn't grow up with one of them at all. Like, no reaching out, nothing. Like, he lives in some completely different country. Like, never seen this man. Well, I don't remember ever seeing him a day in my life. But there's this one family photo where um, I was like two. That's what my sister says. Um, and I also have a sister. But um, I was like two and he's in the photo. And she was like, yeah, that's the only time you met him. So, I'm not really county. But, oh wow, this light has me looking very white and pasty. Like, very, very white and pasty. If I come closer, can y'all see? No, it doesn't help. It doesn't help. Okay. But, uh, I promise you I don't look this white and pasty in person. So, grew up on an island. Did typical island stuff. Grew up with one parent for most of the time. Because then when I moved to the U.S., I just lived with my mom alone. So... There wasn't really that many times in my life that I lived with both my mom and dad. Like when I was before the age of like seven, yeah. But then he used to travel for work, she used to travel. Like, it was just never really all of us in the same space for any long period of time. But yeah, that was pretty much my childhood. Like schooling, I went to if you're from Antigua, you would know this. But um, I went to Green Bay Primary School, which is like a little school in the hood. <laughs> and then I went to Antigua Girls High School, which was an all-girls high school. So your girl went to an all-girls high school, which was, in the moment, it wasn't rough, because I was young. Like, I got to high school at age 10. But the older I got, I was like, oh my god, I don't know how to socialize with, like, men. Like, I have no idea how to socialize with men. That's the problem. It's not like, oh, I didn't want to. Like, I just had no real social skills. <laughs> like, when it came to men. Because during the ages where I feel like you kind of develop certain social skills. Like, I was around all females. And then being in the all-girls school, like, girls are catty. Like, girls are just... <sighs> the amount of attitude and... It was just a lot, but like I have like a great clique of friends still from Antigua, you know, BDR. I think that's our name for ourselves, can't tell y'all what it means cause you know. Mm. But <laughs> I have a great group of friends still from there, but going to an all girls high school was, it was, it wasn't what, it's more than likely what you expect. More than likely what you're expecting. But me and my little naive 10 year old brain. I was not expecting what <laughs> it turned out to be. So yeah, your girl was just flabbergasted. And like trying to go through the motions of like being a young woman. Like growing up with like your dad alone. You don't really. It's not comfortable asking your dad like certain questions. And then I said females are caddy. So going to school trying to ask them you know about stuff was not greatness so yeah I was like a really it's crazy I was a really really insecure kid but nobody would know because I talked so much like when I was younger I would not shut up like in my high school yearbook <laughs> I'm voted most talkative like it's three of us that are most talkative but I'm one of the three but if you meet me now like I'm very zen and chill and like I kind of stick to myself but if you know the old me, you're gonna be like, uh, she never shut up. Like, she's always talking. Like, she was always talking. And I was. Because that's like, because I was just so insecure that I was like, if I keep talking, I'll distract them from like, all of the problems that like, I can see in myself. Like, it was like a survival tactic in my head. But honestly, it was unnecessary because nobody been care. Nobody cared whatsoever. Like, it was really all in my head. Like, all. All in my head. But, yeah. Mm, I'm trying to think of anything else. Like, about my childhood that would be necessary to mention. Or, I can't think of anything else. Like, at the moment. But, if I think of anything else, I'll, like, add it later in. The next question is... What is my biggest fear? My biggest fear is, what is my, I have like a lot of like anxiety and fear around stuff, but 
I'm really trying to think like what would I say is my biggest fear I feel like my biggest fear is disappointing like the people close to me like I'm really like a very loyal friend I'm a very in it friend like if you need anything from me like I'm that friend like I'm always down to like I'm kind of a people pleaser it's bad but I'm like kind of a people pleaser so anytime I feel like I'm not doing good enough or like I'm not doing good enough for my own expectations like I can really get myself into my own funk and like create shit that's not really there just based off like just not wanting to disappoint other people but the older I got and like through therapy and stuff like that like I've realized that you can't really set expectations for anything in life like you can have wants and desires of the outcome that you would like prefer but you can't necessarily have expectations because most expectations don't actually get fulfilled so you're better off just going into it saying hey I would like this but if it doesn't happen I'm fine and then that way you can kind of rule out the disappointment towards the end next question is my favorite celebrity is Rihanna hence my girl back there like I'm obsessed with Rihanna hence all of her beauty products like which I haven't even been mentioning like the ones I was using um, for concealing I have the matchstick in caramel for for contouring I have matchstick and truffle and then for like the little highlight that it comes with I use rum I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this one or if I'm gonna go in with my kilowatt in mimosa sunrise sangria sunset not sure yet but basically I'm obsessed with everything Rihanna like I, I this is life I have all her perfumes like I'm gonna link at the top um my top favorite perfumes and stuff like I have all of her perfumes I have like the sample of the new one cuz in the about to spend a hundred and something dollars on it so I just have like the free sample but if somebody want to buy it for me let me know cuz I take free gifts cuz I like free things so I think today I'm going to try and do something different because it's holiday time and my favorite color is green which was another question my favorite color is green and I have this green eyeliner that I've never tried and then I have this lipstick that I made for my birthday last year two years ago I think it was last year because it was pandemic yes last year and it as well is green so they're not the same shades of green but I feel like I can make something work with it I'm not an eyeshadow girl so I don't know if I want to try and play around in some eyeshadow just to see I have this eyeshadow stick that is like eh, doesn't do anything so we're not gonna use that I'm actually gonna use the highlighter on my eyes which I do very very often um I'm gonna use the highlighter on my eye and let that basically be my eyeshadow and I'm gonna go over it with the green um, eyeliner but next question how would you describe your sense of style I describe myself as thrifty chic because I love thrift shopping because I feel like things that people don't care about anymore I can make them look cute but I'm also really cheap <laughs> like I'm gonna say this over and over again like I am the epitome of cheap like I'm very cheap other than with food I will spend any price on food food I'm gonna spend money on I'm going to spend money on it but like items like clothes and stuff like I just can't I just can't understand for what reason I would want to spend a whole bunch of money on it like I just it just it don't seem like it makes sense like to spend money on a clothing item because I'm gonna wear it like two three times and I'm gonna get tired of it or I'm gonna be like oh you already have enough pictures in it I'm not gonna wear it again so why am I spending money on it no no I spend money on experiences aka travel and I spend money on food so yeah um <clears throat> do you prefer dining in or out that's a very good question because I love to cook so I kind of do like dining in 
but I like sampling different cuisines. So it's just like I like to dine out so I can sample the cuisines. But I'm gonna come right back home and try and make it myself. That way I never have to go back outside and spend money on it ever again. That's really my philosophy. So that's a really good question. I don't I don't know. If you could share a meal with any four individuals, living or dead, who would they be? Rihanna. Hmm. Hmm. Ellen Pompeo. That's um, Meredith from Grey's Anatomy, for those of you who watch um, Grey's Anatomy. I think I would do Michael Jackson. And then who would be my fourth person, living or dead? Ooh, that one... That is a hard question. Like, that's a really hard question. I've never thought about that day in my life. Who else would I be able, like, really want to share a meal with? Because I know, like, everybody's, like, always, like, Jay-Z, like, spend, like, stuff with, like, billionaires and stuff. That don't mean they're going to tell me shit. Like, they're not going to tell me shit. Rihanna, I just feel like I would love her company. MJ, Virgo the Virgo, I just feel like he would be fun. Ellen Pompeo, like, iconic. And... Jada Pinkett, <laughs> another Virgo who I just feel like would just be so entertaining to have a conversation with. Like, as you guys see, I have the Will Smith book in the back. And after reading his side of the story, like, I'm side-eyeing him. Like, I was always Team Jada, but, like, I'm side-eyeing him. So, the chances, like, if Jada talks as much as she talks on Red Table Talk, I hope, like, if we're sitting down next to each other, like, she would want to spill some tea. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm okay with those ones. I'm okay with those four. I feel like if you ask me in a different time, the only person who would stay in that list is Rihanna. But we'll see. We'll see. But for now, that's who I, that's, that's who's coming to dinner with me. Okay? That's it. Um, next question. What would you think, what do you think is your greatest strength and weakness? <sighs> I would say my greatest strength is kind of being... A chameleon in the fact that I can interact with anybody and I can be in any room like there's no place that you can put me that I'm not gonna be able to get done what I need to get done like I can be around serious people like millionaires bankers that type of stuff I can be around more relaxed chill like hipsters stuff like that I can be around like we can go out with my hood rat friends like I I can be involved in any situation with any type of person. I think that's like my greatest strength. My greatest weakness, I'm a procrastinator. I procrastinate everything. Like I procrastinate every single thing. And then I get overwhelmed by all the things that piled up because I was procrastinating. So that's definitely my biggest weakness. Like I am an only procrastinator, but I always get everything done. Like I'm gonna get it done. It's going to be done. But I'm gonna be stressed out getting it done because I procrastinated for so long. What is your biggest pet peeve? <laughs> um, that's a hard question because I have physical pet peeves and then I have like mental, verbal, those type of pet peeves. Like a physical pet peeve, somebody with bad teeth. I cannot stand somebody with bad teeth. Like if you do not take care of your mouth, I just don't understand why you want to open it to talk to me. Like you have nasty teeth, don't speak to me. It is very shallow, I know, because not everybody has like dental insurance and blah blah blah. But everybody can go to like a dollar store and get toothbrush. Like at this point, brush your teeth with soap if you don't have toothpaste. Like use your finger, like scratch off the crust, do something. But people with bad teeth, ew, disgusting. But if we're talking about like regular um pet peeves, liars. What are you lying to me for? Do you really think I care that much about the response for you to lie to me? Because more than likely, if I'm asking you a question, I already know the answer. And I don't think that people realize that, like, if I'm asking you a question, like a serious question, there's more than likely 95% chance I already know the answer. And I just want to see if you can insult my intelligence by trying to lie to me about it. So, like, don't, don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. Because then once you lie to me, we can't be friends again. Or I'm never going to look at you in the same light ever again. Like, do not lie to me. So we're getting on to, like, travel questions. Which, if you're new to my channel, I'm going to link all my travel vlogs up at the top. But your girl loves to travel. Like, <laughs> I don't like to stay in New York for long. New York has four seasons. I grew up in Antigua. We have one season. I don't like the cold. Like, once it passes 60 degrees, like, once it's lower than 60 degrees, I don't want to be here. 
I don't. And if it passes like 85, 90 degrees, like if it's too hot, I don't want to be here either. So <laughs> basically, I just never want to be in New York. Like I love New York. Like I love the convenience. I love everything about it. Like, no, I don't love everything about it. I take that back. But I love New York for everything it's worth and everything it's done for me and helped me out with. But I don't like being here for too long. Like after like two, three months, I get start crazy. Like I was just like, oh my God, when are we gonna book the next flight? Like when are we gonna take the next bus? When are we gonna take the next train? Like I get start crazy. So what's your dream destination to travel to? I know most people wanna do like Bali and stuff like that. But honestly, my dream destination is like Egypt. Like I wanna go to a desert again so badly. Like I went to Arizona amazing like it was hot but it was not the hot that i thought it was going to be like dry heat i will take dry heat over humidity any day of the week like it is so freaking amazing and i realized that i'm talking and forgot that i was doing my makeup <laughs> but yeah um what am i doing guys um yeah i think egypt and australia would be like my two dream vacations like ever since i was younger and i watched the movie kangaroo jack like Australia has always been like pulling me like and I heard that they're like racist and all this other stuff but America's racist too like most places you go to there's gonna be no matter where you go to there's gonna be somebody who doesn't like you based off of something you can't control so I might as well travel the world if you don't like me just don't kill me and we can go about our way like you want to have a nasty attitude go for it. it's gonna bother me slightly but for the most part, I could care less. I really don't care. I really, really, really don't care. Out of all of the places you've been so far, which is your favorite and why? I was just telling you guys how much I like, loved Arizona. So I have been to, I think, about 15 different cities in the past four year, five years. And all of those cities I'm talking about within those five years have been in the US because I have like this goal of visiting like every single state but that's a different story um and I think my favorite would be oh my god oh my god I'm gonna go on to the second part of the question first my least favorite my least favorite was Miami Miami is completely overrated I don't get the hype. I feel like Miami is good for like younger kids, like 21 and below. Well, not really below because you know, like they're not legal to drink, but they still get into places and they still drink. But I feel like Miami is not for someone who's partied before. Like if you don't party like, on the right law, you never had like a wow phase in like your colleges and stuff. Miami is amazing for you. But once you've done stuff before, no. So yeah. That would be my least favorite. But my favorite would have to be between, and I know this is a cop out answer, because I have three favorites <laughs> Austin, Texas, reason being the food, amazing. I think that's the best food I've ever had in my life. Like Austin, Texas, like their food trucks, the restaurants are regular, but the food trucks in Austin, Texas were some of the best foods I've ever had in my entire life. My entire life. From my cooking, other people's cooking, like no matter what, Austin, top hands down best food i've ever had the vibe like the community out there it's like everybody is so nice like they are so freaking nice out there like they're so goddamn nice and then like the parties we went to there's like a street called rainy street like if you want to visit austin you have to go on to sixth street and you have to go on to rainy street those two streets parties upon parties upon like and it's not like little parties like they turn like a container ship like you know those big crates of containers like like they bring in stuff in like off of boats and stuff they turn that into a basically club and when I tell you those parties were rocking oh my god I can't believe I just used the word rocking but <laughs> it was so good so Austin for that reason Arizona the weather was amazing the people were really really nice and I feel like it's very naturey and outdoorsy and I'm like a nature girl like I like to go hiking, ATV riding was amazing. Like, it just had so many things for me to do that we didn't get to do everything. And I'm gonna say Puerto Rico, only because it's an island, I would say. It was a great 
island experience the food in puerto rico sucks ass i'm so sorry if you're from puerto rico or if you're puerto rican the food is terrible mufango is disgusting like i absolutely hate puerto rican food puerto rican food is disgusting to me i do not like the food but the activities el uk rainforest beautiful like nature amazing it was just nature in a different way like arizona was dry type nature like but puerto rico was like water type nature if that makes sense but if i had to put it one two three i would say austin then arizona then puerto rico do you think it's possible to love more than one person at a time um i think you can love multiple people at a time i don't think you can be in love with multiple people at the same time and i think that people don't realize the difference between love and being in love like like i i think that you can have love for many people but in love like in terms of somebody that you feel like is your soulmate that god forbid something happens to this person you don't think that you would have the strength to like move on like that type of like infatuation with a person and care and like life sharing i don't believe you can have that with more than one person at once and if you do, where the hell do you find the time to commit and put into both of those relationships to where you feel like not only are you in love with them, but they're in love with you as well. Like to two people at the same time, I personally don't know how someone can do it, but maybe they can. I personally just can't. Do you think you would stay with someone who is perfect in every way except sexually? Um, no, I wouldn't. I feel like I prefer for you to be moderate in every area than for you to be amazing in everything else but lacking in that department. I just, I feel like, especially for like my age, I'm 26, like I want to enjoy that type of stuff. Like, sex is fun. Who wouldn't want to have sex? Like, who wouldn't want to experiment? Who wouldn't want to enjoy all of the fruits of those labors before menopause catch me like no i'm sorry i it might sound shallow but personally i cannot forever be with someone that cannot please me and arouse me on like a regular basis because clearly everybody has a bad day like women have bad days men have bad days like that's fine but you know didn't them tell like you can't do them like whatsoever no thank you you and your penis go so. Do you think a person's personality can predict how they are in bed? Hell yes. I every overconfident, cocky man that I've ever met sucks ass in bed. Like I feel like they use all the talk to kind of like hype you up to distract from like their lack of knowledge and performance when it comes to like actual penetration or foreplay or any of the sexual acts like I really feel like somebody's personality can tell you that like if somebody is caring I feel like all of like the heartfelt caring men like men who show you that they're grateful and affectionate like those are people who like they care enough to try and put your pleasure ahead of their own or at least make sure that both of you guys are on the same page like personally personality has never never faulted my perception of what that person is going to be in bed uh what do you want your first child to be if you decide to have kids i want a girl i want a girl so badly like currently i'm a nanny like that's my profession and i've worked with both boys and girls and i just know that i'm a girl mom like i'm very much so a girl mom like I have very OCD tendencies, like I'm very clean, I'm very like prim and I guess proper, you can kind of put it. So like I feel like a boy is just going to stress me out like, oh my god, don't jump on this, don't do that, like you're going to hurt yourself, like please clean up, like can we not do this, can we just sit down and have quiet time, like I feel like I'm, <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be so stressed with like a boy's normal activity. Because like I've taken care of boy kids before and I've just come home so stressed. Like, of all things for you to do, why would you want to jump off the back of the couch? Like, for what? And then last question is, when do you see yourself being married? So, for those of you who don't know, I have been in a long-term relationship with my boyfriend of four years, I want to say. 
yeah four years um and i've always said like i feel like five years is like my hey what are we doing like if we're not gonna get married then um what's the point like i've always said that five years is like my cutoff time like i need to see like we talk about it all the time like year five is like the year but talk and action are two completely different things do i have faith in it of course like i wouldn't stay around if i didn't have faith in it but yeah so i want to say within the next year or two i can see myself married it's like <laughs> the way we kind of The way we kind of act now is like low-key on marriage behavior, but <laughs> yeah, I can definitely see myself married within like the next year or two. Okay, so those are all of the questions that we have. So I'm just going to end off with mixing the Mimosa Sunrise with the Sangria Sunset. are at the end of the video tell me how you guys feel about this random impromptu green lip plus like green eyeliner look next video I think I'm gonna actually splurge into like eyeshadowing like I'm gonna watch some more YouTube videos of other people so I can learn how to really get into like eyeshadow because I just I just have never been able to get into it and let myself look proper like I always look crazy like crazier than my normal crazy so, yeah. <laughs> um, if you guys have made it this far, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And follow your girl on all social media. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye! Oh, wait. I forgot something. If you guys are new to my channel, you have to know that <laughs> your girl always has to finish her wine before we go anywhere. And I almost forgot. I'm kind of mad at myself because I already have my lipstick on. So now I'm gonna have to like pour and hope that it doesn't fall on my shirt. <laughs> so let's see how that works out. We're done. Alrighty guys, see you on the next one. Bye.